Fox has been running the same computer since 2016, and it has a little i5 and a 1050 Ti. Earlier in the year, we finally built the computer that she's going to use for the next 10 years. It has a 3060 in it and it has a 7800X 3D in it. And we use the Thermalrite AXP90 heatsink and fan combo with a uh, Fractal Terra, I believe, case. And unfortunately, after a few months, the fan pretty much seized up. So we're going to do a failure analysis of it. And we are going to replace it with the Noctua NF-A9X14. Like that. I will say that goes on really easily. Basically just a paper clip. You want to set your FPS to unlimited? Let's see. No frame rate. Apply. 65 FPS. Well, let's get your new computer in. Do you want to lift up the lid? Yeah. Pax is going to get the game booted up and get it going. And once we have the, the temperature, we can turn on the thermal camera. In the meantime, Let's take a look at how the previous fan failed. I tried taking the fan off, but unfortunately, there, there was I met great resistance, and I ended up having to crack it apart. I ripped it off, and I learned that it's basically put together in a way that you cannot fix, which is unfortunate. Whenever I was taking this apart, I had to really pry it off because this cap stand or whatever you call it, and forgive the grease on here, it was actually heat pressed into the plastic and I still can't get it out. And when I look underneath it, there's some hardened grease and this is a little bit hard to move. So whatever grease they put into this, it uh, burns up and gets really thick. And this thing was spinning so slow. It actually was vibrating really badly. Sorry, I have, I have my phone in my uh, microscope, microscope mount. Well, speaking of that, let's get a closer look under the microscope. Okay. Yeah, so it's like a heat cert. What I'm curious about is can I get the light and pull it out? Mm. So that grease was making it really stiff. Yeah, so suffice to say, you will not be getting this off without breaking the surrounding fan. If they just made a grease solution or bearing that worked a little bit better to resolve all these problems. Now let's take the flush cutters and cut this off and see how is this connected on there. Okay, so it might actually be melted around, or melted inside of this. Now to figure out what's in there. I'll start nibbling away at that. I nibbled through it, and we have a little neodymium magnet. And this is the connection. So I see that only goes one way to that little piece of plastic. So that is how to make it go one way and not come back out. Now I'm doing my best to keep myself from shaking. 
underneath the microscope since I'm freehanding this, but that's the grease that baked I have now scraped it a little bit, and that's what it looks like when it's been scraped. Oh, oh yeah, it's all solidish. It's scraped up as a solid, it seems. Well, yep, yeah. that grease is baked. It's been cooked. Well, suffice to say, that is a very cheap way to make a fan. And you could get away with it if you made the grease better or the, the bearing, or is just a bushing. If you made that better, it, it, it could be better, but if you cheap out on that, the whole thing's pointless and cooks itself in about three months. All right, now that we're on the new computer, turn off the FPS limit. Okay, well, four. The new game takes a lot of power. So temperatures are hovering around 59 degrees Celsius for CPU temperature at least. Not bad. Now, whenever your fan first started failing, whenever Thais's fan first started failing, we, uh, I didn't want her to have to dig out her old computer just yet. So I went through and I underclocked or under undervolted everything to the minimum. And it seems like we got a pretty good CPU in that Everything at the minimum still is stable for Final Fantasy XIV, but it just saved like 10 degrees Celsius or something like that. So we should have done that before. I just didn't feel like messing with that. Now, let's get this recording going. Okay, so we have 56C. Airflow is looking okay. Again, I noticed the power supply doesn't have its fan turning. It kind of bothered me. Should I be bothered by that? No? Okay. I mean, we specifically designed this computer so that it doesn't use hardly any power. Because the idea is the less power it uses, the less cooling it needs, and the less heat it generates during summer. Yeah, I think that power supply is just so happy. It's perfectly fine. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. Thermorite does not make very good fans, but this replacement fan is about the same cost as the entire heatsink and fan combo from Thermorite. So maybe, I know it's a very common thing. We even expected to upgrade the fan, but I kind of hoped we'd get more than four or five months out of the other one. It's just just a shame, you know? Yeah, I think we, we got three. Oh, only three months? Oh, damn. Yeah. You're right, it was only three months. Because yeah. we made it in like, yeah, only three months, okay. Um, yeah, that, it's a shame because the other fan could have been good if they had just lubricated it better. Well, maybe they need actually a, like a floating bearing thing instead of a bushing, but still the rest the rest of it could run forever like these are the cheapest fans that you can get on amazon they were under a dollar each i've run them at like 16 volts for over a year and a half and they're fine if you just make the bearings good enough then it'll be fine hope you guys enjoyed this quick little tear down and review of a failure analysis and thank you very much for watching. See ya.